Mr. Bass, many regard you as the inventor of the modern film title. How did you get involved with titles? Well, I began as a graphic designer. And as part of my work, I created many film symbols for ad campaigns. During that period, I happened to be working on the symbols for Carmen Jones and Man with the Golden Arm for Otto Preminger. And at one point in our work, Otto and I just looked at each other and said, why not make it move? And it was really as simple as that. Now, additionally, I had felt for some time that the audience involvement with a film should really begin with the very first frame. You have to remember that until then, titles had tended to be lists of dull credits, mostly ignored or used for popcorn time. So there seemed to be a real opportunity to use titles in a new way, uh, to actually create a climate for the story that was about to unfold. You mentioned the symbol for the man with the golden arm. When the film opened in New York in 1952, only the symbol was used on the marquee, a testimony to its effectiveness in that medium. How did the symbol function when you translated it to film? Well, you remember that the film was about drug addiction, and the symbol, that is the arm, in its jagged form, expressed the jarring, disjointed existence of the drug addict. Now, to the extent that it was an accurate and telling synthesis of the film and the ad campaign, these same qualities came with it into the theater. And, of course, with the addition of motion and sound, it really came alive and set up the mood and the texture of the film. the transition from purely graphic devices to live action early in your career. In a moment, we're going to look at titles from In Harm's Way and Seconds. Tell us how these titles represented the next evolutionary step. Well, I started in graphics. Then, as you've seen, I began to move that graphic image and film. Somewhere down the line, I felt the need to come to grips with the realistic or live action image, which seemed to me at the time to be central to the notion of film. Of course, then, a whole new world was open to me. Keep in mind, however, that in spite of my fascination with this, I still felt content was the key issue. So I continued to look for simple, direct ideas. For example, in harm's way, a story about the sea war in the Pacific, I use the violent and eternal qualities of the sea as a metaphor for the people and the events of the story. In seconds, a 60-year-old man goes into a hospital and through advanced surgical techniques is reconstituted in his entirety. And he comes out 25 years old and looking like Rock Hudson. Now tampering with humanity that way is pretty scary. So in the title, I broke apart, distorted, and reconstituted the human face to set the stage symbolically for what was to come.
Coming up next are titles for West Side Story and Mad, 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 Mad World. Each is considerably longer than most of your titles. Just how long should a title be? You know, Abe Lincoln, when asked how long a man's leg should be, said long enough to reach the ground. Well, these titles needed longer legs than most. And this is not uncommon for adaptations of stage plays, musicals, because they have to carry a double set of credits. But in addition to accommodating a lot of information, each title still had to deal with its relationship to the film. Now, West Side Story had an additional problem. The film ends with the violent deaths of major characters. It was powerful stuff. We thought the audience might appreciate the titles coming at the end, so they would have some time to pull themselves together before the lights came up. It, it was a sort of a decompression chamber. The graffiti device seemed appropriate because it grew right out of the visual environment of the film itself and could incidentally also accommodate a lot of credit material without palling. Now, Mad Mad World handled muchness in a different way. The idea was take a globe of the world and see just how many visual jokes you can squeeze out of it. Now, both the film and the title were based on similar notions. Take a joke, push it beyond the reasonable point. Remember, the name of the film was Mad, 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 Mad World. Incidentally, both of these titles have been shortened or we'd be here forever.
It's a mad, mad, mad. Titles for The Big Country, The Victors, and Grand Prix seem to go further toward totally integrating the title into the film. Was this by design? Absolutely. Previously, I had used titles to symbolize, summarize, establish mood, or establish attitude. At one point, it occurred to me that the title could make a more significant contribution to the storytelling process. It could act as a prologue. It could deal with the time before. For instance, in Big Country, I tried to establish the notion of an island of people in a sea of land, the vastness of which is penetrated by a stagecoach. After an endless journey, it reaches this isolated group of people, and only then does the story begin. So, the Big Country, it was the three months before. In the Victors, it was 25 years before, World War I into the middle of World War II. And in Grand Prix, it was a moment before the preparation for the Monte Carlo race.
Deutschland ist nun erwacht. Zehn Jahre lang gehofft hatten. Deutschland ist nun erwacht. Nichts wird dann diese Bewegung mehr. Nur euch allein ist etwas ja alles zuzuschreiben. Wenn ihr damals gegangen wärt.
Mr. Bass, we will complete our discussion by looking at titles for Nine Hours to Rama and Walk on the Wild Side. These titles appear to be a further extension of the medium. In these titles, I came to grips with what I think is the most challenging aspect of any creative endeavor. And that is to deal with ordinary things, things that we know so well that we've ceased to see them. Deal with them in a way that allows us to understand them again. In a sense, it's making the ordinary extraordinary. For instance, Nine Hours to Rama is about the nine hours which preceded the assassination of Mahatma Gandhi. By taking a clock, ordinary object, and subjecting it to an unrelenting examination, I hope to create an intensification of one's awareness of each moment. Walk on the wild side, I use the cat, a creature we've probably stopped really seeing a long time ago. Now the challenge was how to restore our original view of a cat when it was new and strange and to transform it into a pervasive presence, which was at the same time faithful to Nelson Algren's story of New Orleans street life.
In recent years, you've been very active in other forms of filmmaking. Have you abandoned your work on titles? My work on titles was a marvelous opportunity to learn about filmmaking. I think I touched about every aspect of the process, both creative and technical. And I worked with many wonderful people. But there are always new challenges, new mountains to climb. I've since directed interior sequences for other people's features, short films, commercials, my own feature. But it's all film, <laughs> and film is wonderful. I'm a filmmaker, and I intend to continue making films of all kinds, short or long, because there's nothing I'd rather do.